Hi, Charlie, giving you Friday's live trading. I hope you're very well. It's 26 minutes, 27 minutes past seven at the moment. I don't get started with the um, uh, the in the uh, the swing trading room for another 15 minutes or so. So just a quick um, preview into today. We have got um, some consumer inflation figures out of the US mid-afternoon today. So it could be waiting around on that. That could... Um, create a bit of movement here on the I've got the euro dollar up at the moment um, we've seen a nice move up not gonna, we've all know what's going on so we've seen a nice move up have managed to capture a bit of that um, but I was already long really from last week but I've added to it so we've got a bit going on at the moment um, it feels but you know we'll, we'll see how that goes um, I'll be looking for um, separate entries today um, on a bit of a pullback so if we have a pullback day I will be looking for that now that could take <clears throat> into this afternoon but I'm gonna be looking on a, for a pullback into around about by looks of things around about 118.60 or so so it's not too far below where we currently are so have a quick look at the four hour chart um, do, 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 do. I think it's gonna be the 12 hour chart because on the 12 hour chart we had that nice breakout through the uh, the 12 hour 50 down here but that, that's way too low really um, so I'm not even going to be looking that low so um, technically I'm just going to be using some moving averages and that's what I'm doing basically out on the daily chart so I'm estimating at the moment it's going to be around about 118.60 will be an area where I'll be looking to um, to add an entry so um, that's pretty much it we know that the pounds had a cracking run as well um, over this last week or so so I'm still looking for um, some more upside we'll have to see um, now the pounds hit that 50 day moving average could certainly have a, a proper reaction from that over the coming days um, but if the pounds doing that then it's likely the euro will be coming down as well but anyway we'll have to see so certainly um, pounds up against resistance the uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi have, have struggled really to, to do much um, at all as you can see so um, I think they're they're struggling with um, COVID um, down there in Australia, and um, that's affecting the the currency there. Um, New Zealand dollar um, fed maybe a little bit better in the end last night than in relative terms than than Aussie. But anyway, I won't, there's nothing too much to do there. So uh, that's the gen the general game plan. I'll be going down to some of the smaller time frames at the time if we do get that pullback. We have got those inflation figures coming out of the US, so they could help. Um, um, create that pullback or potentially reverse it so we'll have to see but I suspect there's gonna be a little bit of waiting around um, for today so but that's all that's the the general plan is looking for a bit of a retracement around that I'm estimating around about 118.60 area is where I'll be looking to buy in um, I'll press pause for now okay just back here and it's now 10 to 10 I'm um, sat here with the guys in the trading room I'll bring them over so this is what you see now this is the swing room and with the swing traders today so you can see the people along the left hand side there and you can see and then I've got a projector and stuff there as well and we've got a chat box I think you can see part of that chat box um, there as well so you can't see all of it because the 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 amount that the screen that I record of the screen is only a small amount um so yeah, I was looking for a pullback here today on the euro. We're not getting it yet. We've just nudged uh, the round number at 119. As you can see, we're sitting at 118. Oh, actually, you can't see that. Ugh, squeeze that back in. There you go. Um, I forget that. See, this is the range. Now you can see everything on this chart. Um, it's a small capture area, you see. So once I'm not recording, I, I make everything bigger again. So yes, yeah, so we've hit 119 as you can see right now, and um, but I was looking for a um, a pullback today, and we haven't got it yet. However, there is those um, uh, inflation figures coming out, the consumer inflation figures coming out at 130 today. So um, we'll see if that produces a pullback. If it doesn't, I'm not going to chase this today. So if I take this to the hourly charts. I'm not going to chase it. Um, I, I want to buy on a pullback. Um, I'm not going to be bothered about trying to chase it in in that regard. So if it carries on going higher, then it will just, as you know, I'm already long, but um, I'll just carry on just holding and um, and then we'll see. Um, it was only if we'd got a pullback that I would have bought it today. So anyway, we'll come back to this, I guess, at lunchtime.
Okay, just back now. And so we are at 10 to 1. We've got these um, consumer inflation figures coming out at half past 1. This is the daily chart still. I'm not fast about the news per se. I want to use the news <clears throat> to get into a long position. So what I'm actually going to do today is I'm just about to place an order to buy if it comes down. So I'm going to use any weakness on that on those inflation figures uh, to get long because I'm what I'm actually looking for is to see if this euro can ultimately work its way over into next week. It's not going to be a day trade um, because so so rarely that I am day trading these days. Um, so I'd be looking for um, it to come down and then ultimately I'm looking for price to get to the daily 50, potentially even to the to this channel here. Um, but um, so I'm using that weakness and then I'll use, look at targets beyond that. So it's not going to be uh, a, a day trade. Um, I'm not interested in, in that. So um, so what am I looking at? So what I'm looking at, I'm just using my um, my short term moving averages here. I've got a five moving average here. It's crossing, coming up fast underneath price at the moment. Um, and so what I do is sometimes if I want to be aggressive, like at the moment, um, is I'll use that as my my uh, my source and so it's a bit like when we had this move up here you can see that price very often the red moving average here this 5ma um, price will come into that sort of zone and then off it goes again and I say sort of zone because it's never perfect it actually came down a little bit further there but that's what I'm looking at so I'm never looking at it for an actual touch um, if you can see this uh, yes you can you can't see off the bottom can you but um, you don't need to see that um, that is showing at 118.47. Never looking at the actual touch. What I always look at is what's the trajectory of that moving average? What's the trajectory? So I'm looking at where it's the direction it's heading in. So I'm actually looking at not a touch because it won't need to in real time. It, if it comes down to, I, again, this is just comes down to experience. Around about 118.60, about where my cursor is. That would be enough. I'm not saying that it can't come lower. I'm just saying that's enough for me to say, yeah, I'll, I'll take that because it could get that low, maybe a bit lower, whatever. And if it is going to turn around again going into later today or next week, that's if it does come down, then um, you'll look back at that and that moving average will have scooped up underneath price. A bit like here, through this period here. So let's get the order in. Um, so I'm not bothered about the news itself because if you're swing trading, what does it matter? It's just a piece of news. You know, it's not. It's different if you're day trading with a 10 pip stop, 20 pip stop. That's very different, and then you're more likely going to wait until the news has come out, um, or if it's something like FOMC or you know a major central bank, then you're more likely going to want to wait for the news to come out to see how the market overall is moving. So, but this one, I think the market's already tipped its hand hat, not its hand, <laughs> and so um, and so I still think that there might be a little bit more upside here. So let's get the order in. So I'm going to put this in as a as a buy limit order, and so I'm going to put that order in at one. 1860 and I'm going to put a stop loss next to that at uh, I'm going to put it down at 11780 so it's a 60 pip sorry an 80 pip stop loss so right down here it's not right down at the absolute lows I'm going to try and get away with a, a stop you know down here and so and hopefully that's enough um, on a swing basis so that's an 80 pip stop so you can sort of guess what my overall target might be if I get in at sort of 60 of, or uh, I, I need it to go to a, a minimum of 119 well into the mid 119s or towards 120 to make the risk reward work so you can get an idea of what I'd be doing there with that that entry and we'll just see how it goes over the couple, next couple of weeks and what what happens in that regards it could be that the market completely rolls back over and I get stopped out the sale of e that's trading isn't it so I've put it in as a half lot it's 50,000 that's a half lot um, on this account with um, I'm basing it on fun enough the, the this is the challenge account which has got you know when I last did the update it was around about 50,000 in it so I'm still basing all the trades on a 50,000 it actually I just calculated it and it's saying to put in uh, about an 80,000 so 0.8 um, of a lot but 
I've already got a fair few positions in. I don't really need to be too aggressive just yet. So I can just put the uh, the half lot in for now on this one. And so everything's there. Place the order. So we shall see if I'm going to get filled a bit later. So we've got about half an hour to go. Back down to the hourly charts. I was just looking at this hourly chart with the traders. Um, it started to come off. I think it's got the scope to come down. And so looking at this, um, certainly the scope is there. Um, so it's just a case of whether we do see it come down uh, a bit more and whether it comes down and reverses or actually just sells off and we end up on a on a down day. But I'm going to absorb that down day and take that and um, and then and use that down day to to get me entered if that's if that's what it's going to do and just to, and just go with the the short term momentum overall and see if it can then maybe turn back up again into next week on whatever news or whatever helps propel it then so it's the same no different over here you know whenever you've got a trend candlesticks by themselves uh, for me are, are not that important a candlestick by itself i always think it's important to whatever style of trading you have um, that you have to uh, place your trades into context, whether it's context with time frames or whatever it is. So, uh, so I'm not too fussed about a candlestick. It's a bit like this candlestick over here. Um, at that point, um, you, you could have very quick, you could have thought, "Oh, look, we've got a doji candlestick there. That's a real negative." And then all that happens is the market then carries on, end up going higher. So I'm not too fussed about whatever candlestick gets produced today. I'm looking at the bigger, the bigger picture of, of what's gone on there. And I think that, but I do think that the potential is to come down because of that pound dollar and that pound dollar hitting that 50 day moving average. If that starts coming down, we might see the other currencies pull back a bit as well. Anyway, I'll press pause for now and we'll come back to this. Okay, so just back and uh, the news is out. It's just gone past, uh, it's 1.35 now. And the, the PC figures came out of the US um, strong, but not quite as strong as expected. 3.7% was expected. The PC core inflation figure actually came out 3.5%. So still a strong figure, but hasn't exactly got the um, a, a rocket under the... Um, under the dollar here this is the euro dollar on the hourly chart now so um, nothing too very muted here just what five minutes or so after the news now not really too much going on so um, no volatility at least anyway so I would like as I've said I'd like to see the euro push down um, but as it currently stands um, it's all fairly muted and, and holding up now if it does come down great I can use that as that opportunity to buy um, but um, it's a, again quite possibly a uh, a positive for the euro and cable and the likes that those figures haven't come out uh, and exceeded and so um, hence why they're just sort of holding there right now I'll press pause for now we'll come back to this later okay just back it's now three o'clock just gone three o'clock and I'm gonna call this video a wrap today because we've really not done too much we can see we'll see that the euro sitting there around about 118.80 so let's take this to the hourly chart since we had that news um, it's trickled its way down it has you know not really done much at all so um, as it's turned out a pretty quiet day there today and um, the pound uh, very very similar so they're consolidating aren't they so um didn't manage to obviously get in now I've, now i'm talking um it's trickling down again no? yeah. amazing literally as i press record it's just started to come down a little bit but it's not gonna be enough like that order's down there at 11860 so maybe i get filled down there later but all i've shown you today is my existing trades that i've had this week I uh, did have a stop out yesterday, but then I thought it was yesterday, um, and then a, uh, but then another trade which hit, a, which got trading stop for a profit. I think that was yesterday or the day before. So it's not been too much going on this week. Uh, that's where I'm at, and um, couldn't get a, a a live trade today. But even if it had have been um, executed, it might be that if it comes down by tonight that I'll get executed. But I might also get this video wrapped up, and. Um, but even if I had have got filled on that order, then um, uh, 
you know I, I would have been holding on to it anyway there was no no day trades today sometimes I'll look at the markets and it's pure luck bearing in mind I only do these videos once every two weeks and it's pure luck on the day whether there is any day trading for me because I don't really day trade myself much these days but now and again if, if, if the market is ripe for it and the intraday patterns are ripe for it then I might do otherwise I'm more usually more interested in um, identifying a you know, a swing trading opportunity. Anyway, uh, that's it for today's video and I'll leave you to it. Enjoy your weekends and um, I'll see you next week.